Hello, everyone, and welcome to the VIP bi-weekly webinar series for Agency Platform. My name is Paul Steinmetz, and we are going to be talking about bundling services for local clients and case studies today. So this should be a great presentation for everyone. Let me do an audio check if you don't mind. Uh, if you can hear me and see my screen okay, please let me know. Okay, fantastic. Today we're going to go over how to bundle particular services for local clients. Yes, but we're also going to talk about why you would bundle services, how to go about bundling different options, because as you know, we have a lot of different services in our service menu and it can get a bit overwhelming if you're trying to figure out the perfect blend for every single client as opposed to maybe having a pre-structured approach to what you offer that may be a go-to now every client's not the same but there are a lot of commonalities and needs for local clients and of course we have case studies that you could put some work into and white label so for everyone on the webinar now if you could give me a shout out in the chat box how many of you uh, that have your primary target market being local clients Okay, Connor, Emily, Alex, Bob, James, thanks. I don't have a single person saying that you do not have your primary target audience as local. Anyone not have a their their primary target audience as local businesses? And I mean by local businesses is as in geographically located primarily to a particular city. Plumbers, chiropractors, plastic surgeons, carpet cleaning companies, gun stores, you name it. Okay, so we're all on the same page here. Local it is. So the first thing I'm going to go over with you is going to be case studies. So uh, whenever it comes to writing case studies, there's really, there's two ways to do it. One uh, is based on data and data trends across your general uh, clients. Two is a spe client specific case study. That can be hard to do, especially if you're starting out and you do not have case studies in hand. So uh, I've been <clears throat> communicating with other staff members inside of agency platform, and we've been able to gather for you some of the case studies from our uh, parent company eBrands and gotten permission so that you can put your name on them, white label them, and use them as case studies on your website. That way, if you are wanting help building credibility for your company, or you have a client that says to you in the sales process, what's your background? Can you give me some referrals? Can you show me some results that you've had in the past? If you don't have anything on hand, it can get a little bit awkward. So that's why we're handing it out. Does anyone already have case studies that you might want to give me a link to and you might want to, if you want to show them off? So I'm going to share this link with all of you. Let me go back to here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six case studies. And let me know if you got get this link, guys. Case studies. Just want to make sure I don't have problems with sharing permissions on it. Okay, thank you, Emily. You got it. Okay, I'll open a couple of these and, and go through them, and then we're going to get into bundling local services. But one of the things I want to touch on is what are you going to do with your case studies? Uh, yeah, you'll put your company name in there, or don't put your company name in there and just use the content. But where would you put case studies? Well, one idea is. If you have an active blog already on your site, you could create a blog category and entitle it case studies 
because blogs are usually easy to populate and some of you are uh, familiar with that. And you could just populate the case studies in a blog category and then I would add a main navigation or services drop down link to case studies. They go over there, they should have their sub menu off the blog category to case studies. So that's one way to publish them that would be an easier way. Another way would be to put them on your social media uh, account. And I've even seen people put it on their email signature just as a link. So from the email signature, you link over to see our case studies. You guys have any other ideas on it? I've seen people go as far as produce press releases around case studies as well. So, you know, we hand out to you the case studies, but it's really up to you on what you do with them. Let me open up one of these. So no, note that there is a PDF and a uh, doc version. The PDF is going uh, is not going to be editable to you. The doc version would be. We give you both. So if we open up, for example, BuzzBuddy. So, uh, and yes, you can change the name in here. Again, this is from the parent company eBrands. But this is a doc version. At note, you want to download it to be able to edit it. But this is from 2017. So a, a traditional case study is going to go through and simply tell the story. Where did they start? What was the approach that was taken? This is an SEO case study to also uh, work on their Google My Business, Bing, and Local. And then we have the data grids for you, the graphs on what was the trend, where did they come up. And this is the amount of, of keywords that we're ranking, right? First, mo first month of SEO on the date versus where they were by March 2018, 3,200% increase. And then what was the trend in their Google My Business data? So Google My Business, the debate continues on what's more important to a local client. Would it be their organic local results below the Google Maps or the Google My Business listing? Yeah, it's a toss up. It's gonna depend on what client you talk to. But regardless, showing Google My Business listing data in your local SEO case study is very strong. Uh, and they're going to understand this because every client that's local wants to get in that snack pack in Google. And having a case study that says, over this point in time, uh, this amount of people came to you through your Google My Business listing, this amount of people requested directions, this amount of people called you, and then some Google Analytics data on percentages and traffic. So the, you know what, what you're really needing is going to be the formatted data, right? But from there, if you want to change some of the content and the writing to introduce it differently, you're more than welcome to. And then you have your case studies. In regards to your question, Connor, let me take a look at that. Regal Sales. Yeah, this is a long-standing client. Well, some of these case studies are going to be from clients that that have a shorter lifespan that they've been with, and some of them are going to be at a longer one. But they all follow the same similar format. Google Analytics data, GMB data, if they're local, and then uh, the amount of keywords increase. So what, what do you, and the logic, what is it showing? It's showing momentum increase in organic rankings it's showing uh traffic in uh, data increase in the gmb and then it's showing the traffic increase as a result of the website traffic as well so uh you know if if it is based on particular keywords and i i've seen companies break this down to where a case study is based on a particular keyword or a set of keywords but what's the problem with that well, keywords fluctuate daily. And if that case study is now three months old, it's possible that for some of those keywords, if they stopped doing what they were doing or there were updates in Google, they may not be on the first page anymore. So that's why it's not based on particular keywords. Okay, awesome. So are you guys all good on case studies? <clears throat> Do you want me to go over more of them? Are you excited to have them? Feedback? Or are we ready to move forward to talk about bundling services for local clients? What are you going to charge? What are you going to offer? Why are you going to offer it? Which ones go together? Emily's got it. Anyone else? Any questions on case studies? They're important. Okay, final word on case studies. I encourage you to download these. 
uh, reform, at, reformat them at your will. And again, just get them on your site. If you don't have case studies, just throw them on your site, put them in a blog category, just do it. Because when you run into a client and they say, oh, do you have any uh, proof of examples of what you've done before? Then you send them there. And for those of you that haven't had a lot of clients, actually that's not true. Is there anyone on the webinar right now that has never landed a marketing client ever? You're a startup. I have one person saying yes. Anyone else? I'm not gonna call out your name. Can't see you. Anyone else? Tasso, good. Uh, Jennifer's had, oh wait, uh, Tasso has had one. Jennifer, Trent, Jen, Brian. Won't call it your full name, put it that way. Okay, particularly if you've never had a marketing client, is it true that you have, based on your operations, that you have never serviced a client before in the history of your company? Let me word that again. Based on your operations, is it true that you have never had a marketing client before? And what's the answer? Well, the answer is that you've had thousands of marketing clients. Now, uh, it, you, if you're using, you're, you're utilizing agency platform as a back end, uh, our parent company, eBrands, which you know is the same thing as agency platform. We've had thousands of marketing clients. We are your operations. We are the ones that are running the marketing campaigns. So it is not, it's really, it's not fair to say to a client that you have zero experience, that you've never handled a marketing campaign. We have handled thousands and we are you. We are the one running operations. You are not alone. So should you use our case studies? Yes, you should. And you should have great confidence in them. And that doesn't just go for those of you that don't have existing marketing clients. That goes for you, those of you that have less than 20 in history as well. I mean, if you have more than that, then you should have compiled your own by now. But if not, I'm just saying, in my opinion, there is nothing wrong with using these case studies because we are your operations. These are our case studies. These are the results based on these services that we run, which are the same services that you will be selling to your clients. So you have a lot of experience. We're partners. Cheers. Okay, uh, a couple shout outs on questions. Uh, Emily, congratulations on your nine years in business. Uh, missed a link to the case studies. Okay, if you're coming on late. Isn't that weird? Uh, you said, who, who said I missed a link to the case studies? Brian, are, does that mean that you cannot see a uh, history in chat whenever you sign in to the webinar late? Isn't that lame? I think that's the case. You, you, think, you would think GoToWebinar would have fixed that by now. Uh, sold a website, but no SEO. Never had a marketing client. I've been using this program before, but I've, I have several clients. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's step into uh, local services for local clients. So if you log in to your dashboard and you will notice for one, there's a uh, new chat system to uh, the support phone number, which is for sales and customer support. And then if you go to start new project, and uh, these are where you're gonna dive into the services, yeah. So I'm gonna click on just one of these and then I'm what I'm gonna spend a lot of time going over today is just the exact service details, what they are and talk to you about how to bundle them and how to price them. So, and I always like to ask this, is there anyone on the webinar that does not have dashboard access? And I'm going to share in the link in chat right now. This is link to the pricing document that is available inside of or outside of the dashboard. Connor asked, do we have marketing material that is white labelable? We do. We also have the SEO and PPC audit reports, yeah? Okay, if you don't have access to agency platform, we've implemented the workflow, you go to the website, you click sign up, and it's going to start you on a free trial. What happens after the 15 day free trial? 
Well, if you pay for any marketing campaign, which preferably you would for your own company, uh, then it becomes $50 a month just to have access. So sign up for a free trial, get access. Let's go over the local services. So I'm going to start with uh, local SEO. And yes, we've been through local SEO. Local SEO starts at $149 a month and goes up from there. In regards to why you would offer local SEO and what the different package levels are, it's pretty clear. There's organic traffic, clearly, but there's also the Google My Business listings up top. We target both of those. Now, whenever you're offering a local SEO services, a lot of the tracking is based on what? Leads, it's based on traffic, it's also based on the Google My Business listing data. How much traffic came through that? How many clicks to find directions, clicks to make phone calls, clicks to get onto your website from the GMB listing itself. The reason why local SEO, and again, I won't spend a lot of time on this because we've already covered it in previous webinars. The reason why local SEO is so important to local businesses is because of what type of traffic? I'm going to ask you for a shout out. In regards to local SEO, what makes it unique from other things? What type of traffic does local SEO capture if you have visibility? And I'll wait for responses while I hit up agency platform support for a particular document. Tesso says free organic, right? But what, what particularly is different about organic traffic? Let's say versus uh, paying for um, pay, uh, display advertisements or taking out an ad in a newspaper or a billboard or a spot in a magazine. What's different? Okay. Well, what's unique about the organic traffic is, is that it's people that are proactively looking for your business based on the keywords, right? So if they're typing in teeth whitening, Denver, Colorado, then they are proactively looking for a teeth whitening service. If they're typing in uh, used cars for sale plus city name, then they are proactively looking for that particular bit for a business that's offering that sort of a service or a product specifically, as opposed to other types of marketing. You're getting in front of people that are maybe interested in a certain topic matter, for example, with display advertising. You can pay to have a banner ad show up on an automotive website, for example, but it doesn't mean that people are specifically looking for a certain service or product. No, it does not. So organic SEO traffic is very unique, especially with the GMB, because it's people that are actively looking for that product or service. Now, of course, you can pay per click to show up to grab that same traffic, but what has a greater conversion rate, organic results or paid ad results on the exact same page? Of course, it depends on where you're ranking at, but let's just say that you're ranking in the top three positions. Anyone know the answer to that? Connor says organic. Anyone else have any other comments? Someone goes into Google, they do a search, there's paid ad results, and then you have your top, say, five results that are organic. Which one has more clicks going into it, the paid ads or the organic listings? I have everyone voting organic, I think. Does no one think it's paid ads? Organic, absolutely. Not to say that paid ads are not worth it. So our organic is kind of still is still the kingpin for local businesses. And then we also do the GMB. Now, whenever you talk to a local client, this is the service that they're really looking for, right? This is how everyone finds them. And uh, for local businesses, what is unique is the GMB. And what is in the GMB is more than just a website, right? What does it have? Well, driving directions, 
photos. It has a community of people from Google uh, that report different things on, you know, yes, they're reviews, but certain questions are answered about that business. And then real photos are loaded in from people that are visiting from there. And then, of course, you have the link to the website and you have their business hours, additional information, and you have the ability to click to make a phone call directly to them. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons why the GMB is so important and local clients want this. Now, whenever we're, we're today, we're going to talk about a local bundling option. And one, one of the benefits to a, a local bundle is hitting their marketing effort from several different angles to maximize performance. Yeah. So whenever it comes to a client that wants to get ranking on, you know, the very top listing on the Google My Business listing, and they are not in the in the middle of a city, how do you handle that? And this is one of the top questions that I get. Let, let me show something to you. Let's just say I happen to be in Kansas City. So let me type in Kansas City dentist for an example. And let me just show you on a map uh, a common situation that you're going to run into with GMB. And then one of the reasons why I'm talking about bundling and why bundling is important. So this is the heart of Kansas City right here downtown. And let's just say that there is a dentist that happens to be this guy over here. Comfort Dental, way out here. Uh, or someone clear over, let's just say, here to the right out here in Blue Springs, and they're in the suburbs outside of the big city, and what do they want? They want, when someone types in Kansas City Dentist, that they are going to show up in the, G, in the Google My Business listing. Is that possible? I'll say it one more time. If someone is living in, in an area outside of a city, it's another city outside of a bigger city, or it's a suburb, and they want to show up in the GMB when someone types in the bigger city, such as Kansas City plus Dennis, but they live in a, their business is located in a suburb. Is it possible for them to show up in the GMB snack pack top three or even top 10? James says, no, I don't see how. Tasso says, not without an address in the location. Connor, yes, surely not sure. The answer is maybe. So uh, what would it depend? Well, it depends on the concentration of businesses according to that business category that are concentrated within that larger city. Now, when we're talking about dentists, there are plenty of them. So would a dentist from outside the, the big, bigger city in, a, in an outside suburb be able to get into that snack pack? No. Uh, what about the top 10? I don't think so. Not not for dentist. Now, one of the ways to check on that is to come in. For example, I typed in Kansas City Dentist, and I will just start going down this line until I get to any dentist that is not in Kansas City. And I'll bet you I would scroll through more than 40 to 50 of these before I will get to an address that will say that it is outside of Kansas City. Let me just skip clear out to 10. And now I'm getting into the outer suburbs. You see how I skipped to page 10 and look at how the map shows up now. Did, did you see that? Look at all of these points, Kansas City downtown. I skipped to page 10 in the maps and now where are we at? Did you notice that? Everything is all on the outskirts here now and that's all that they're showing. So uh, the concentration that they're going to be showing on page one is going to be on the out, uh, outer skirts. I just switched to page three. Now everything's more centrally concentrated to the middle. Of course, it's also going to depend on the IP address of the person that is typing it in. What's my point? Well, with GMB and a certain influence on local SEO, sometimes things that are their physical address can keep them from getting uh, ultimate exposure. So it's a good idea uh, for a lot of clients to use a blanket approach in marketing where you're bundling multiple different marketing services in to provide more of a comprehensive marketing approach so that you're not just all in on one. We have amazing results with our local SEO services as well as with our GMB optimization. It's all in the same package. But I'm showing this to you to let you know that 
it, you don't, I recommend that you run more than just one marketing service for a local client. Now the local SEO is, is typically going to be your bread and butter. In regards to different local packages, does anyone have any shout outs on which, what, what's your local SEO go-to package for your clients? And while I'm waiting for that to come in, on the different local packages, I get asked a lot, what are the difference between the intervals? Well, the difference between local basic at 149 a month and local one at 249 a month is the amount of effort that's and workload that's put into the campaign. To summarize, that that is the basics behind it. My recommendation, if you've got a client that's really strapped for cash and you're really just wanting the dashboard set up and the basics covered to all of their, their local SEO, Local Basic is an amazing solution for you. If you're wanting to put more oomph into it uh, because maybe the client's industry is a bit competitive, maybe they're not in a small city, maybe it's a medium-sized city, and you need some more uh, workload put behind the campaign to increase performance, I recommend going with Local One. Now, a lot of people love Local Basics because it's 149 but unless my client is strapped for cash, I would always be going for at least the local one at 249. However, if the client doesn't have the budget, local basic is a hundred times better than not doing anything. And it's a, an amazing service. But for a client that's uh, looking for good performance, I would step it up to local one. Uh, James, shout out was that he runs local one and he runs local two. James, do you ever run local two? for a client that only has one physical location. So on local two, a lot of people think that whenever you have two geo targets, that it means that the client needs to have two physical locations. And that's not the, the case. Right, so James, you will run local two for a client that ha uh, with two geo targets and they have one brick and mortar location, right? Yes, that's correct. So, for example, what would that be? Well, if I were to look at the Kansas City map here, that would mean, for example, let's say that we take a, a dentist that happens to be in Blue Springs over here, and they want to also target the Kansas City traffic, right? Would it be wise to only target the larger city's traffic for GMB and organic? Would that be wise? I'd say no. I would say absolutely not. Um, hey, we all we all want to promise the world to our clients, but uh, we got to be realistic. They don't live in Kansas City, and for our organic results, they're going to have a hard time. And can Google recognize a physical address on a website? And does Google connect that your dentist website in Blue Springs is not in Kansas City, and you're trying to rank for organic keywords in Kansas City? Does Google connect those dots? Well, everything with Google is a big mystery, but experts say yes. So it doesn't mean that you cannot rank organically in Kansas City for a, a dentist that would have an address in a suburb. In fact, it, it, you absolutely can, especially for longer tail keywords. However, I would be running a, a marketing campaign for this client with two geo targets. One geo target, Blue Springs, right? And honestly, my other geo target may be Independence over here. I might not go after Kansas City at all, but regardless, it would be Blue Springs, definitely, and then it may be Kansas City as well. And in that event, they only have one physical office, but we're going to go after two geo targets, and that's where we pull in local too, and it has even more work put into it, which will help to make both of those geo targets perform even better. And then on regional one, because there are up to three geo targets, we just now start calling it regional. But on regional one, what would that mean? Well, it would mean that this dentist that would be in Blue Springs over here, we would be able to do three, three geo targets. So we'd be able to do Blue Springs. We may do Grain Valley and Independence, or we could do Blue Springs, Independence, and Kansas City. Now we're really stepping it up, right? And then, of course, regional two, which is up to four. So that's how it works. So whenever you're talking to a client, no, just know this about the services. The local SEO plans are all structured for people that do have one physical location. But the local basic is really the entry level. 
when you want to talk about, you know, stepping up to performance uh, for one geo target, that's the local one. Then you step it up to, with two geo targets for local two, three geo targets with, with regional one, four geo targets with regional two. Um, so that's what I recommend. Uh, okay, question. Can you go with the large workload of local two? which is, I know, two geo targets and only have one geo target. Is that possible? Why would you want to do that? Yeah, it's totally possible. It just, you know, whenever it comes to the total keywords, which is on local two, 75 keywords and 15 primary, instead of having those keywords for two geo targets, we will have all those keywords for one geo target, but we're going to put the local to workload into just one geo target. And similarly, can you use the regional one workload and instead of doing three geo targets, only do one or two geo targets and have a massive workload on it? And the answer is absolutely. So when talking to a client, you can break up your pricing by geo target. Okay. Uh, Brian says, when I worked for an agency, I ran geos for three or four cities when the client had one location. Yeah, absolutely. Joe says, is this markup enough to cover basic expensive expenses? Well, we'll talk about that. But what, what I want to talk about is how to go about pricing these. Now, the easiest way to, to price a local SEO campaign is what? Well, we have our suggested pricing here. Most people charge more. We have wholesale in black and uh, retail in red. But what's a different way of pricing? Anyone have any ideas? Think outside the box. So there's the wholesale rate, and then people, a lot of people look at that and say, okay, well, um, I'm just going to double the rate or triple the rate, and that's what I'm going to charge. But is there a different way of pricing this? Joe says hourly. Well, that'd be hard given that you don't know how many hours we put into it. Connor says commission. Well, that's sales side. That's different. I'm talking about the service itself. Cat says discount if they pay for all six months. I'd definitely do that, but um, I'm, I mean the up pricing mechanism even. Brian, you're spot on. By location of service area. What What's, okay, so whenever I'm explaining this to you guys, what's the easier way for me to explain this by package level and talking about every detail and workload in each package on what differentiates the different package levels? Or would it be easier to charge a client based on how many geo targets they want to hit? Am I making sense to you guys? Therefore, if you're explaining these packages to me as a client and the different pricing on them and why they're differently priced, I would just put a pricing, for example, guys, right? How much will you charge me for just what you, you can call, for example, the entry local SEO, which is one geo target, which should cover all their basic setup and maintenance, but don't put performance expectations on that at all. I mean, it performs, but come on, it's 149 a month. What I would say is, hey, this is the really small one, and I wouldn't even pull that out. I would only offer local one through regional two, but you name these whatever you want. I would say, listen, I have pricing based on different geo targets. So what I would say is one, I have one package type and based on the different number of geo targets, it costs more. So for one geo target, I charge this amount of money. For two geo targets, I charge this amount of money, three and four. And by the way, just to let you know, when you go with more geo targets, we do more work such as videos, PowerPoints, and press releases, right? So that when you're presenting it to the client, instead of throwing five packages in front of them, you can just throw one and just the detail, rough details behind it and say, and this is my pricing for additional geo targets. How easy is that to explain to them? Very easy, right? Okay. Now, aside from just the geo targets, there was one other way to price this that I spoke about. If you only have one geo target, and what is the functionality of that pricing that I spoke about? Remember, I said for local one, 
you can obviously this is for one geo target but for local two you have a larger workload but it can also be just for one geo target for re, for for regional one which on it which is three geo targets we can use the same workload only for one geo target and then for regional two which is for four geo targets yeah but we can use the same workload and all those keywords for only one geo target so what are we looking at here guys structurally speaking on these packages there's two different ways to price them that's going to be really easy to explain to the client which is one i price my my services and local seo for you based on how many geo targets you want to target and you talk to them and say here's a map what do you want to hit and they'd say well i want definitely hit two geo targets and you say well for one geo target you charge x amount of money uh, and then for two geo targets, you charge this amount of money, right? Makes sense to you. Now, what's the other one? And then, and then, and then you say, and I also charge based on uh, the different uh, levels of uh, what would you say it? Per, the the amount of work that's put into the campaign. Uh, I'm fumbling for words here to categorize it in terms of. Um, You could just say I offer the different premium level services where we put in a larger workload into it for a more competitive market or industry, right? So for example, they only want one geo target and you told them you could price for two, three and four geo targets and they say, no, 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 no. I'm in a city, there's nothing else around us. I only wanna focus on our one geo target. Okay, well then local one is for them. Is there any other way to up price them from here? Yes, you could say, I also have three uh, levels up of per workload that I can put on this to, to create a more aggressive campaign. And that should be gauged based on what? How competitive is their industry and how big of a city are they in? So what you can say is, now you have one geo target that you wanna hit, but if you want us to upgrade the performance, I have like my, my gold and then my silks, bronze and silver, then gold plan on the amount of work and uh, per performance expectations as a result so that you could put in the workload of regional two into one geo target. My point being, based on how much workload you wanna put into one geo target or how many geo targets you wanna hit is how you can offer these services to a client. And I would keep it simplistic in saying it that way and then just bullet pointing generate uh, the workloads that they have in common. I confuse anyone? I don't feel like I explained that perfectly. Brian, you following me? Everyone else follow me? Speak up if you're not. I'm gonna move forward here real quick. Brian's, Brian says you got it. James, you picked up on that? Okay. If it were me and I had a dentist in Kansas City and uh, they wanted to get aggressive with their local SEO and they had one geo target, I'd probably be trying to sell them on the local too and using that workload towards one geo target and, and because they're in a big city. I really would. I'd be shooting for the local too in a big city and maybe regional one if they have the budget, honestly. So uh, I discourage you from going to the 149 for competitive clients. I think that people struggle when I speak to them understanding how to angle these packages, not just for different geo targets, but for different co competitive ratings for certain clients. Okay, moving forward. Uh, I forgot about pricing. Um, in, in terms of the exact pricing on the SEO, again, I'll let you play around with it. If we, you want to have it, I, I think I'm not going to dive into pricing too much. I'll just reference the, the normal um, suggested retail. But uh, what I what I would like to reference is to uh, point out is that with the pricing, if we have a separate webinar to go over this, I think it'd be a lot more productive because we would be able to only talk about pricing. So I'll skip over that. 
Okay. Uh, well, one second. Okay. Got my dog's out of my office. Contractors just arrived. Okay. Now, anyone offering national SEO, I just want to point out. Yeah, Tesso. Yes, I have dogs. I'm at a home office in Kansas City. For the national SEO plans, if you do have national, that's okay. But honestly, I'm not going to talk about this for local clients. What the next service that I want to really talk about for local clients, it's going to be the retargeting plans. Now, yes, whenever it comes to uh, cost per click campaigns and PPC campaigns, how many of you are not comfortable? And yes, I'm angling the conversation behind this, but how many of you are not offering PPC campaigns to your clients? Be honest. You're not comfortable offering a PPC campaign to your client because you feel like maybe you don't understand it well enough. You don't know how to price it. You don't like that a lot of their money goes directly to Google and it's transparent. And how are you supposed to make money on a 15% management fee or whatever it is? You get what I'm saying? Michael says, I'm not comfortable. Brian loves PPC. Cat not offering. Um, Bob, I don't understand. Okay, so here's what I have to say to a bread and bundle, a bread and butter. In other words, your default marketing bundle for a local client, I recommend that re the retargeting campaign is always going to be included. Now, it's a bit confusing whenever the retargeting plans are underneath pay-per-click because for retargeting and display, necessary, are you paying per click? Now, on display advertising, not necessarily are you paying per click. And are you paying per click on retargeting? Well, not necessarily. So uh, for retargeting, I'm going to assume that you all understand retargeting and what it is. Is there anyone on the line that does not understand retargeting? Anyone? Okay, so for retargeting, the reason why you wanna include retargeting for a client's campaign is because every single person that lands on the client's website, what percentage of those people do you think are gonna fill out a contact form or contact them or leave their contact information? Let's say it's a local client, they have 100 visitors that have hit their website. How many out of those 100 vi visitors are likely to leave their contact information either through making a phone call to them, filling out a form, or starting a live chat? Brian says 10% or less. I'd say 10% is very generous. Ian says three to five out of 100. So we're talking three to 5%. Sumish says 5%. Jennifer's on at 5%. James at 5%. I, that is a very good rough number and one that a lot of people would be comfortable with. Listen, how hard is it to talk to a client to say, did, did, based on your traffic, you're, you're going to capture contact information, information on less than 5% of people. You're paying me to market for you and drive traffic to your website. What are we doing with the 95%? I mean, seriously, what are we doing with the 95% percent of the people and that should be a very easy talking point to have with a client and if it's affordable to be able to do something for the 95 percent and market towards them why wouldn't you and the answer is yeah you you can market towards them so how does that work uh well one we put a cookie on the website and anyone that lands on uh, the website, we put a cookie on their device and everywhere they go within the Google Display Network, we're going to show banner ads for the client's company. Ever had that happen? Click on a website. Now, everywhere you go, you see their advertisement. So with the retargeting, either on a uh, CPM or per click model, it's not going to cost much money. 
and this is what a lot of people do not know. You think, well, yeah, but to run a retargeting campaign in Google is paid advertising. There's these display ads everywhere that people that have already been to their website sees, but how much does it cost? What's the cost structure? Well, usually you only pay if someone clicks on that ad, right? But the objective really is just to stay in front of everyone that's already been to your site with your branding. That's the objective. It's really not to drive a lot of clicks. It's to keep your branding in front of everyone that's been on your website everywhere they go so that when it pops back in their head and they say, oh, you know what? Right. I got busy for the last two weeks. I still got to make that dental appointment. And who's going to be on the top of their head to look into now? Well, that dental group has been haunting me everywhere with their ad, and I see it everywhere, and now who am I going to go to? Then they might not even click on the ad, and chances are they won't. They're just going to Google their name or look them up and call them, and that's why retargeting is so important. For a local client, if you put retargeting on their website and you run retargeting ads for everyone that came to a, a typical cl local client's website, how much money – in Google ad spend, is that going to cost you to run retargeting for one month? You load in an unlimited amount of money into their AdWords account. We will do it. How much of that money is going to be taken up running a retargeting campaign for a local client one month? Anybody? $5,000, $1,000 in ad spend? Brian says zero if nothing's clicked, right? So do you, do you, do you anticipate zero clicks? Anyone else running retargeting for local client, funding it up, thought you'd be spending hundreds of dollars a month on it and ad spend, and what did you see happen? Brian says $100. Anyone else? Not a lot of people running retargeting for local clients. Okay. Less than $100 for sure. I mean, it would have to be a lot of traffic coming through. My feedback is less than $50. For a lot of people, less than $20, guys. Now, on the flip side, <clears throat> how many impressions of that display ad that showed up for people that landed on their site? If there were 100 people, can, will you be able to report to the client that I got your ad uh, impressions in fr uh, displayed X amount of times over one month through retargeting? It'll be in the thousands, guys. So really, the, the sale and the value mechanism for retargeting it's not necessarily in the clicks, it's in the amount of displays that you made their ad have over one month for branding purposes, and it will be in the thousands. What is the paid advertising terminology for 1,000 ad impressions? And by the way, an ad impression simply means that the ad showed up in front of the person on a computer. So anyone, does anyone know what is the paid advertising terminology to represent 1,000 ad impressions. Right, Brian, it's called CPM. And what does CPM stand for? This is where it gets confusing. Now, why am I talking about CPM and 1,000 impressions? Because I'm gonna to talk to you about how to price paid advertising based on a retargeting and display model, and this is gonna be very important for you. CPM, Brian, defines it as cost per 1,000 impressions, yes, but literally, what does M stand for? CPM, why isn't it CPT, cost per 1,000? Why does it say CPM? It's cost per mil. That's the abbreviate. That's the spelled out. CPM is cost per mil, M-I-L, and uh, mil represents 1,000 because uh, as Ian says, it is the, I didn't know this. I, I was just thinking to myself, man, I should have looked this up. It is the Roman numeral for 1,000. That's what it says. Okay, thanks, Ian. All right, so... If you get, uh, if it's cost per mil, great. So what, 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 what am I pointing out here for a retargeting campaign? And not just a retargeting campaign. This, this particular package also runs display advertising, which I'm going to get into. We will run a retargeting campaign for $49 a month. That includes setup, okay? 
how much ad spend can you expect the client to be budgeting to spend per month? Which, by the way, you can fund the account direct for them. I'd locate $25 a month to retargeting for a local client. So how much is it going to cost for you to run retargeting with ad spend for a client? $75, but you get much more because we're going to talk about display advertising next. Okay. Now on the retargeting, make sure to keep in mind that one of the big benefits of running retargeting for a local client is to also retarget them and their employees. And why? Because when the business owner who is your client themselves clicks on their own website, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to put a cookie on their device. And now everywhere that business owner goes within the Google Display Network, which is everywhere, and, and also their ad roll network, what are they going to see? What is the business owner going to see everywhere he goes now? Anybody? Right. His ad. Okay. This is good for client retention too. So I'm also looking out for you guys. I'm saying, is this good for the local business? Absolutely. 95% of their traffic, you are not going to know their contact information, but you can haunt them with advertisements, literally uh, for free. Really. And most people won't click on it. It's branding and high volume to the 95%. This has to be included for local clients, guys. Now, the business owner himself is going to click on his website and everywhere he goes, he's going to see his ads. And I promise you, when you have your monthly check-in meeting with him, he's get him or her, they are going to talk about that. And they're going to be impressed and they're going to be very happy about it. And then what are you going to be able to say to him? You say, yeah. And everyone else that visited your website sees that as well. And he's going to say, wow, that is amazing. So uh, retargeting, it needs to be added. Now on display network, which is also included in this management, what do we do for display network? So the display network in Google, of course, is a ton of websites out there and it's also displaying ads. So one thing that running ads in the display network versus and running ads with retargeting, it's gonna be uh, for the most part, the same type of ads. They're banner ads, they're advertisements, they're visual advertisements that are created, right? So running a retargeting campaign in parallel with a display advertising campaign goes hand in hand. Now, which uh, pop quiz for everyone on the line right now, to, between retargeting and display advertising, which one will generate new traffic that has never been to the website before? Okay, so you get what I'm saying. Retargeting is to recycle the traffic that's already been to the website. And retargeting ads are displayed everywhere throughout the Google Display Network. And uh, follow me here. Retargeting ads are meant to recycle the traffic that's already been to the website because they've been to the website, we know that they are interested. Therefore, Everywhere they go on any site within the Google Display Network, we're going to show those ads, which pretty much means that there's really no management to do on retargeting ongoing monthly because we're going to show their ads everywhere because we've already qualified that person because they've been to the website. Now, the Display Network is different in how it works. We're going to show display ads on the Display Network to people that have never been to the website. So it's considered a marketing tactic for generating brand new inbound traffic and leads. So if you're offering local SEO and this paid advertising solution that I'm talking to you about, your two services so far that's going to generate new inbound traffic will be the SEO and then the display advertising. Okay. And display advertising, are we going to show display ads on any site in the display network? Would we, do we do that for display advertising? Not retargeting, but for display ads, we do not show ads on any site in the display network. No, 
course not. We don't want to show uh, display ads for a dentist on a, a website that mainly talks about plumbing activities because it's not going to be an interested party. We're trying to generate new traffic with display ads. So we're only going to show display ads on relevant websites within the display network and try to get people to click to come over into the website. Okay, now when we're talking about display ads, a lot of you are uncomfortable dealing with a cost per click because it gets high. And whenever you're offering a client a service based on a cost per click, what are the client's expectations? I'm going to spend a little bit of time here, so bear with me. When you are selling a paid advertising service to a client, or let's just say I'm selling it to you, and I'm talking to you and saying, hey, yeah, well, how it works is we put these ads out there. And when someone clicks on the advertisement, you pay for that click, and then they come to the website. So the upside is that you pay nothing unless they click on it. What are the expectations of that client whenever you offer a service on a cost per click? What are their expectations? I'll give you a little bit to respond to that. Cost per click. What are they going to want? What are they going to want in the monthly check-in meetings if you're if you're going to talk to them about cost per click? It's a very easy mechanism to understand. Listen, if I'm offering retargeting only to a client, am I ever going to talk to them about how much the cost per click is on retargeting? No, absolutely not. Not whatsoever. I'm going to talk to them about what with retargeting results. With retargeting results, what am I going to talk to the client about? And unless I'm running a massive retargeting campaign, which I won't, Thank you, Joe. CPM, when you offer retargeting, you talk to the client about the ability to keep your brand in front of everyone that has been to the website. And you don't talk to them about how much it costs per click ever. That's why you're not comfortable offering PPC. And in this service, you don't talk about cost per click and you don't need to. It is retargeting. And the benefit is having your branding in front of everybody. And when you talk to them about performance on retargeting, you talk to them based on what? CPM, co the cost per impre impressions, but thousands of impressions, but leave the cost out. When you talk to them about performance on retargeting, I'm, I would just budget for you on retargeting how much you're going to put in to cover the retargeting up to $25 or whatever. And then on your reporting, you're going to simply let them know that, by the way, on your retargeting, I got you 10,000 impressions to keep you in front of your existing people that went to your website. Get it? They don't even know how much they're spending on retargeting per month. They don't even need to know how much per click was. You're going to tell them how many impressions they got. And if it's impressive, the amount of clicks that they got, you might say that to them, but you might not. Simple. This is not a high-end service. This is a bread and butter. Get in front of the 95%, manage client expectations, and it's based on thousands of impressions that you get to them if you want to show performance. Got it? You do not give them an ad spend. Budget whatsoever. You give a set and you include it in what you're charging them. I say $25 to start with. Okay, now we move on to display. Now, on the display side, there, there are two ways to set up a display advertising campaign and how you pay for it. So I don't, I don't want to confuse you guys, but how many, uh, what are the two different ways that you can pay for display advertising campaigns to run? The primary two. Do you know? Okay. One of them is by cost per click, which I do not want to go with that model for you. But another way that it can be managed, and you can get in touch with your project manager whenever running one of these campaigns and let them know that you want to run the display campaign based on what? Did you know that to run a display campaign, you can choose to pay, to pay, for the campaign based on the cost per thousand impressions. Isn't that cool? So we're getting away from cost per click on, uh, on this style of display and retargeting and focusing it around the cost per thousand of impressions. So instead of launching a campaign that you run 
for a cost per click, maybe you would just want to state how many thousands of impressions you're willing to pay for as part of the campaign to run behind the scenes so you never have to talk to the client about ad spend. You got me? And then you're just funding the account up and limiting how many thousands of impressions the display network will be able to generate. Make sense? Does anyone know what's the average cost per 1,000 impressions for a Google AdWords display campaign? Anybody? Huge bonus points on this one. Does anyone know what is the average cost per 1,000 impressions to run a Google display campaign, putting your banner advertisements for the client in front of traffic that has never been to their website on relevant sites that we hope to get leads from? Brian comes in at $10 per 1,000 impressions running in Google Display. Anyone else? This is going to vary by quite a bit, right? Cat comes in at $5. Yeah, $5 is totally legit. $5 for 1,000 impressions would be uh, closer to my expectations. What does that mean? Well, if you are willing to include, uh, and, and by the way, this budget that's put in the ad spend can be utilized for the retargeting and for the display side. It can be balanced by the project manager. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't have to load in a set amount for the retargeting and when it runs out, it runs out and a set amount for the display advertising and it, when it runs out, it runs out. It can be balanced by the project manager. What does that mean? That means that for one client on retargeting that's set up, maybe it only blows through $10 worth of spend to run that retargeting, honestly, which means that if you had set a, a $50 a month to be used in ad spend each month, it means the other 40 would go towards the display advertising side. And if $40 goes towards the display advertising side in ad spend, how many impressions at $5 per 1,000 impressions would that bring the client? $40 Five dollars per one thousand impressions. Uh, we're talking eight thousand impressions. You understand what I'm saying here? You don't have to talk to to this about the client, but what I'm saying is, listen. If you fund fifty dollars a month in ad spend and you're paying for Plan One, then you can run a whole retargeting and display advertising campaign for a grand total of $100 per month, $50 in ad spend, $50 to manage it, and the client doesn't have any involvement in ad spend, the client doesn't have any involvement and doesn't even need to know the cost per click, you're gonna to talk to them about the value based on uh, the 1,000 impressions, at, or not even 1,000 impressions at a time. Whenever you're gonna to talk to them about performance, you're gonna show them how many impressions you got them. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So how much on that level would you be able to talk to a client just to say, listen, and everyone that visits your site, I'm going to haunt them with ads and we're going to show ads proactively on a display network to also bring in inbound traffic. And you know on your side that you can run this for $100 grand total for a client or step it up for a bigger client on plan two. I'm not going to go into the additional details, but fund more money into it and, and manage more. How much can you charge be charge for the level one entry level? $50 in management per month. You need to fund it with $50 to cover display and retargeting. $100 grand total cost to you. What should you charge the client? Anybody? What would you charge your client? Brian says $300. Dasso, $300. Ian, 20%. Ian, no. Ian, you're not charging a percent of ad spend to manage their campaign at 20% because there is no, uh, there is the client is not going to know how much money is going into ad spend with this. They don't need to. You're funding it. And it's going to go towards the retargeting and it's going to go towards the display and it's going to be based on the amount of impressions that are going out there and not cost per click. This is an entirely different pricing model. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because if you're charging 20% of $300, let's say they have a $300 ad spend, right? And you're charging 20%, how much money are you making off of that? 
it'd be 60 bucks. I mean, if it was factored into it, that mean that $240 would, uh, roughly speaking, 240 goes to ad spend and, and maybe you're making 50 bucks to manage it. The difference in what I'm t telling you is that if this costs you $100 to run and you're charging $300 for it, you're profiting $200. That, those are the kind of margins that you need. And that is how you get it with this style of paid advertising. And that is the reason why a lot of people stay away from pay-per-click, but this is not a cost per click, does not have to be a cost per click styled campaign. You understanding me? And it is vital to run this for local clients and it's very cheap and affordable. And if you're not doing anything to target their 95% that are leaving their site, you're doing them a great disservice. And if you're not having at least one other marketing service running that is actively pulling in new inbound traffic and leads other than SEO, then you're putting all your ducks in one basket to generate new traffic through SEO. You should at least be running one other and display advertising will proactively Make an effort to pull in new traffic and leads. Okay, have I smashed on this topic matter enough? Are you guys good? Make sense? James, you're good. I'm sure some people are really confused. Joe, you're good. Brian's good. Okay, cool. Now, I wish this was outlined for you a lot more, but hey, you can utilize our services any way you want. This is my insight into what I recommend for you for local clients for a bread and butter marketing bundle. I'm not saying don't run this another style. I'm saying that your default core go-to package for a local client should be local SEO and priced based on how I explained it to you so you can know how to get performance for them and upsell them for multiple geo targets and based on performance levels now you know now the next service that i'm telling you to offer is the retargeting and display advertising which can come in total cost to you at a hundred dollars or less and that includes ad spend and then you can charge two three hundred a month for this easy right so this needs to be in your default marketing bundle and let me, let's just do the math on this real quick. Okay. If you're going to go with a local one, and this is my go to service for you guys, really, on a client with one geo target that has a, a lower budget, you can play around with the local SEO campaigns, right? But I recommend, would recommend, sorry, by default, going with a local one for one geo target. So that's going to be a 249 cost to you. So I'm not going to talk about retail cost yet, right? Because on a retail cost to a client, whenever you have a marketing bundle, do you need to break down the cost for every single marketing service? No, you do not. Okay. So local one is at $249. So in, in the core bundle, I recommend starting there and going up. And then we have, sorry for the scrolling. Retargeting plans. Now, it's not just $49 a month because you need to factor in $50 a month in ad spend. So we now have $100 a month to run retargeting and display. Now, what's your wholesale cost up to based on the basic bundle so far? $249 plus $100 for the retargeting and display. Now, we're up to $350 in wholesale cost. Now, if we're only going to do two services for a local business on the marketing side, these are my top two on a two service bundle. OK, and that puts it at a three. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it was two forty nine plus one hundred three hundred and fifty dollar wholesale cost. What would you charge for this? Wholesale cost three fifty retail. What would you charge for it? So it comes in at seven eighty nine. Okay. Obviously, if you double the price and three fifty and three fifty, you're up to seven hundred. The joke comes in at eight to nine hundred. I like that. The lowest I would go on this would for me would be obviously double the cost on what I'm offering, which would be seven hundred dollars. Now I want to point out that really once the 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 a, a traditional heavy spend PPC campaign is very heavy in management tasks. 
Display advertising and retargeting is very easy to manage and not that it's set it and forget it, but there won't be much ongoing monthly work at all to do with this. Really, it, project management wise, it's very light and very easy. So I, I'd, uh, the lowest I would go on it would be 700. And then I would step it up and you can offer more, you, you could price it higher. You could easily price this at a thousand if you wanted to. Now for the lower budget clients, you could add this on to the 149 a month. Now, what would be my next go-to plan for a local client? So I've got about four minutes. I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to continue this conversation the next two weeks. And uh, I'm going to keep, I'm going to continue this into a part two, two weeks from today. Okay. Now, social media is going to be the next uh, marketing category that I would say is bundle level three for a local client. So the top priority, number one, local SEO. Honestly, my recommended add-on from there would be the retargeting and display, which you can come down on that with how you upprice it quite a bit if you wanted to. Now, on social media optimization, every lo local client needs to run social media, but some of these rates, are, some of these packages are so low, you can be running so just social media publishing for the client just to keep their social media account up to date. You don't have to offer a client a social media marketing campaign that is like our titanium that is extremely aggressive and has positive ROI expectations, which we can do that. But for your go-to bread and butter marketing bundle, you want to make sure that you are covering all of their basics, which is local SEO, retargeting to go after that 95% that's leaving the site, and then at least a supplementary service on display advertising to bring in new inbound traffic and leads. And then we have social media. Now, why social media? Well, because they at least need to keep up with their publishing at a minimum. Otherwise, people go to their social media accounts from their website or find them direct and they haven't published anything in three months. They look like they're going out of business. It just looks bad. So they need to be running it. And a lot of local clients in a consultation with them will tell you, yeah, they're embarrassed about their social media presence because they haven't even published anything in a long time. So on the social media, um, I would recommend uh, to just try to cover what plans that they need they need the most for publishing. I'm going to save this for next uh, two weeks out because we have new packages I should be able to show to you by them that have social media publishing solutions that are, for example, only for Facebook and only for Twitter and only for whatever one other one. Get what I'm saying? So that you could add on, oh, okay. And so I've offered you local SEO, the retargeting display advertising. And now how about we keep your Facebook account up to date with posts that I proactively publish for you. Keep in mind, this is gonna be all centrally located within the dashboard with all SEO analytics, lead tracking across call tracking forms, as well as live chats. And what's part of the centralized dashboard and centralized reporting? AdWords data. So the display ads and retargeting, would we be able to populate some of that data into the global reporting and dashboard? Absolutely. As well as social media data and analytics if we're on the social media side would we be able to use our awesome social media management and publishing dashboard for this absolutely so it covers what i consider to be the trifecta for a local business which is local seo covering organic local seo gmb plus the retargeting plus some baseline publishing level service on social media marketing just to kick it off and we'll continue this in two weeks, but this is gonna come up to a bread and butter package for a local client that you will be able to charge 1,000 a month for, and your wholesale rate would be 500 or less. Sound good? And you have a blanket approach. Now you're covering social media, proactive ads on display, retargeting, uh, going after the 95%, organic local SEO to go after people searching for them, as well as GMB maps optimization and the trifecta is there for local businesses. And now you have a more a comprehensive marketing plan for local businesses that should be your go to. That's what I would try to sell them on. And then if they want to talk you down or they have a lower budget, fine, break it up. But hopefully this gives you a good insight into a bread and butter style 
uh, that you can offer. And I'm getting asked one more time for the case studies link. Okay. Anyone else? I need to wrap up here. Case studies link. Final thoughts. Feedback. Uh, James, I don't, I have to dig out your email. James, you're welcome to email me. And so is everyone else. My email address is paul at ebrands.com. Ebrands is the parent company to agency platform, kind of the same thing. My email is paul at ebrands.com. You're welcome to email me. You're also welcome to set up a meeting with me too. Email me though. I'll send, send you a meeting link. What is that? Brian says, what is Admiral and how does it compare to display? Two weeks away, bring that question or email me, Brian. Anyone else? You need final links to something? You have an easy question to answer? Brian asked me a hard question. Okay, everyone. Hey, thanks so much for being on. We will continue this conversation in two weeks. So wrap your mind around it. Look into the package. Think about pricing, how you pull it together. Do me a favor, show up two weeks on part two and help me help you by talking to me about, hey, this is what I did with the plans. If anyone want, is, is going to work on this, work on their numbers, figure out how you're going to offer this, put some time into it. I'd love to have you promoted to be able to speak on the, on the next webinar two weeks from today. Raise your hand. I'll turn on your microphone and you can talk to me about what you pulled together on this and what you're thinking on the bundled solution of your choice for a local client. Would love some help and some other people that are willing to come on the horn in two weeks and talk about what you've dug up, what you've done, and it would be great for all the other agencies involved. And of course, there's a giant reward for helping out at that level. And we grant you a massive dose of karma. So, Work on it. See you in two weeks, everyone. Until then, take care and best of luck with your agency. Bye, everyone.